seeing those numbers during office hours, you can reserve yourself a copy of The Best of Scotty McClue out now on CD or cassette. The CD is eleven ninety nine, and the cassette is nine ninety nine. So there you go. But you choose. The CD is all beautifully shrink wrapped and what have you. Now um, we're talking to Stuart, who's on the Whittle. Are you there, Stuart? Dinky do. I'm here, Scotty. Dinky do. Dinky do, mate. How's it going, me old china? All right, me old china plate. Now um, <laughs> you caught me a bit short tonight. I was on the way home. Yes. Yeah, you said there's a line free. I phoned up, which I have done many times before. Yes. Tonight I got through. Well done. Um, you are the lucky one. I think you deserve the clap for that. And I also think you should get a bit of fanny fear. That's the Century Radio Fanny Fair. Scott, you do me proud. I do, so. I look after my listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to this Remembrance Sunday. Yes. This, this Remembrance Day, sorry, not correcting. Um, well, today was Remembrance Day or Armistice Day, and then Remembrance Sunday is the nearest one to the 11th. Which is this Sunday. Which is this Sunday, of course. Should we make it the last one? I don't think we should now. Why not? Well, if our boys had gone out there in the war and lost... Could you imagine living now under a German dictatorship? Like well, you wouldn't be. You see, I think this is a popular myth that was put about by Churchill. Churchill, you see, was a warmonger. He loved war, right? Winston Churchill was a dreadful man for war. And if he couldn't find a war at home, he would go and start one somewhere. He would go and, and, and join some army. He charged with the cavalry. He used to write commanding officers letters begging to be taken on to a theatre of war. Yep. The man was obsessed with fighting. The thing was, Hitler started it, if I'm correct. Well, yes, but Hitler could probably have been stopped with better politicianship. Good point. You know, I think had somebody gone and had a word with Hitler and said, look, you know, we're going to put the screws on you, chummy. I, I agree with you, truly, Scotty. You see, and because the problem is that, uh, you know, while it pains me to say it, the bulk of what Hitler envisaged has actually come to be true. Mm, yeah. And as this, as this country has struggled, Germany has prospered. I don't I think this country has struggled. You see? So, really... Winning the war, I mean, the fact that we were the ones who received the surrender, the yeah. winning the war is very much an opinion. I I agree. I mean... And D-Day was not to stop Hitler. Hitler. Hitler was already a spent force. By the 6th of June 1944, Hitler was a spent force force and as for living under the jackboot as for invasion of this country as for nazis that's just a load of propaganda put out by the churchill government of the day but the problem is i mean don't get me wrong scotty i'm fast approaching 30 mm. i wasn't round i wasn't very well educated towards the war um go back to the 18th 19th century i could tell you a lot more about the war through my own um, education, I wasn't informed truly. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not on this phone line now to have an argument. I mean, I've listened, I listened to you. No, it's I'm not on. an argument. It's not an argument. We're just going through the facts. I don't waste time arguing with people. Someone like yourself comes on. I think this is an intelligent man uh, who's come on the phone in here, but he needs to be sorted out on one or two facts. I've been misinformed. You know, I mean, there was a, there's been, you see, there's a lot of propaganda was put out during the war just to keep the whole thing going. Because when we started the war, this country was £6 billion in credit. Mm -hmm. When we finished the war, we were £3 billion down the swanee. In other words, Churchill, covering himself in glory, and the rest of us in the brown mucky stuff, actually nearly bankrupted this country and did away with the flower of its youth. But what would have happened if we had have lost the war? Well, I mean, how do you mean lost? 
Well, in my eyes, as a 30-year-old that's not very well educated and, and towards this conversation, um, this topic... That I doesn't will. matter. Don't worry about that. I mean, I only know about it by reading every last scrap of, you know, books that comes into the, the, the local bookshop or the library. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, but what my point is, I mean, we had men that went out there and fought for country. Well, we had men who were conscripted to go out and fight. We had men who had no choice. They would have been shot as deserters or cowards. Well, well, yeah, I, I mean... You go they would have been draft dodgers. You're going into a different subject there because I personally don't agree with conscription. They've still got it in other countries, haven't they, in Turkey? Yes, yeah, well, I mean, in, in a number of countries in the world, they've got it. Now, in my own opinion, that I don't agree with that. But the men were, the, these men were all conscripted to go and fight that war. Exactly. I mean, you're right, Scotty. I'm not. And then Churchill wrote a set of volumes called "The History of the Second World War," and yeah. that was taken because he was a great writer, and that was taken as a definitive history of the Second World War. But it was it was ideal that Churchill wrote it because he managed to write himself, uh, you know, out of all the brown mucky bits and into all the glory shiny starry bits. Well, that happens today with politicians, doesn't it? It still happens now. He was a great self-publicist. So, as a politician, he was an excellent politician. But the thing is... Right, but he also ensured that the flower of this country's youth died. Mm, yes. Right? To, to, to little avail, mm -hmm. sadly. Pains me to say it. And he also ensured that we were very near to bankruptcy and that we had far from a land fit for heroes and what saved this country right was the coming of the new queen queen elizabeth ii the crown uh the the coronation uh the crowning of queen elizabeth ii in 1953 yeah, and but that, said, that's what saved this country in terms of raising its spirits. The thing is that we're going into we're going into a fork in the road here. The question is, should we remember today whether you were whether somebody pointed to you and said you will go and fight for your country or you can stay here and be shot? The point is, this is my opinion, and take me, Scotty Dinky Doo. You've got your own opinion. And all the listeners are probably thinking... Yeah, but my it. opinion can be changed. My opinion can be swayed by intelligent callers. But the thing is, men and boys, I mean, at the end of the day, Christ, they were boys. Of course they were boys. I've gone out there and fought for country because in those days, I mean, today, we've got people out there that hate the royal family. I myself, I shouldn't say this, I agree with the royal family. That's my opinion. You should say that. You should say that you agree with the royal family because if it wasn't for the royal family, right, this country would have been in dire straits yonks ago. In that deep, mucky stuff. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the royal family have... have it, it, I really, really seriously doubt that people realise just how much the royal family or how much the monarchy has done for this country. Well, we're, we're, get, we're getting sight. I mean, I the, the problem is, Scotty, I mean, I, I sort of like part-time sort of work in a bit of a shop where it's sort of a local community shop. And working in a shop, I find that you're not entitled to opinions because I might upset customers that come in. Well, you see, I think everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's what, well, li are, that's what living are. in a democracy is about. That's what free speech is about. Yeah, but don't get me wrong, I mean, in this job that I, I work in the shop, I can say something that can upset somebody, and that customer will not come back into my shop. Well, you've got to watch you don't offend, but having said that, you are a very, very important part of this nation's commerce. You run a shop. You yeah. are a grafter. You are a very, very important man. This country used to be known as the nation of shopkeepers. I know, unfortunately, now it's not. You know? No, well, it's not at the moment, but, you know, who knows, it might come back again. Oh, I'll tell you, but, <laughs> I'd love it too. Well, I really would love it. Well, too. I think we should look at that. Instead of talking about wars, we should talk about commerce. 
you know what? That would be a good subject to discuss. Fantastic. But and I maybe have... we should forget. Sorry? Maybe we should forget. No, I don't think we should. I, I don't think we should. I think opinion's divided in this. I'm going to take some more calls. Scotty, dinky day. Hey, lovely to talk to you, and thank you for everything you do, and thank you for all your hard work. Take care of yourself. If you're around the area, I'll see you soon. Bless you, mate. Dinky-doo.